Mister, you killed nine men. I never heard anyone say you made allowances for your opponent's ability with a gun. Have gun, will travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Good morning, Mr. Paladin. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Paladin. Good morning, Mr. Davis. I'm going to be at the Pacific Union Club. I was wondering if there's any mail for oh, me. This. Clerk, a, a room, please. Uh, do you have a reservation? Uh, uh, no reservation. This trip came up suddenly. You have references? I'm Ned Alcorn, president of the City Bank in Placerville. Uh, uh, here are my credentials. Oh. oh, yes. Oh, yes, of course, Mr. Alcorn. If you will sign here. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Powell. Oh, uh, uh, wait a minute, clerk. Uh, yes, sir. I uh, want you to take a good look at this picture. Mm. Manfred Holt wanted dead or alive $2,000 reward. This man might show up here. A desperado here in San Francisco. Uh, may I see that, please? Oh, I beg your pardon? I'm sorry. My name is Paladin, Mr. Alcorn. I couldn't help overhearing. Oh. This Manfred Holt, wasn't he to be hanged last week in Placerville? Why, yes. He broke out of jail three days ago. Uh, killed two deputies. You think he's coming here? I think so, yes. He's killed nine men, and he'll come after me sooner or later. Why? Well, I was the chief witness against him at the trial. Oh, I see. His wife's living in a cabin up in Grass Valley. She had a son born while the trial was on. Holt swore in court that he'd see the infant and then come after me. Well, it'd probably be better for you if Holt was stopped in Grass Valley, wouldn't it? Of course. As it is, there's a sheriff and a couple of deputies chasing him up there for all the good it'll do. This makes the fourth time Holt's got away from Sheriff Ludlow. Oh, that sheriff's not too smart. I'm no bounty hunter, Mr. Alcorn. However, I am available for a fee. To do what? Here. My card. Have gun. Will travel. There's nothing funny about loneliness. Yet one of America's funniest guys, a man who lives by laughs, is haunted by loneliness. His name... Jerry Lewis. In the latest issue of Look Magazine, in an exclusive story entitled Always in a Crowd, Always Alone, you'll find out exactly what Jerry Lewis is like. Look tells you why, when Jerry goes on stage, he carries nothing in his pockets except pictures of his family, and what happened when he forgot those pictures. Why does such a successful man drive himself so hard he ends up in the hospital? You'll learn in Look what Jerry thinks about, how he feels inside when he clowns for a nation of television viewers. How much time does Jerry spend with his four boys? What is his home like? And what was Patty's little speech that made such an impression on him about all the girls he'd meet on tour? For the intimate and often startling story of Jerry Lewis, don't miss the latest issue of Look Magazine, the issue with Jerry and Patty on the cover, at your newsstands now. Get Look today. It was a long ride from San Francisco to Grass Valley, and I had a lot of time to think about this outlaw, this Manfred Holt, who had killed nine men. Nine men lying dead somewhere because of him. And his wife had just borne him a child. It was a strange sort of cycle. Near noon of the second day, I rode out into a wide meadow and suddenly pulled up short. Three men were spread out along the side of a knoll, their rifles ready. They were working towards a thicket in the middle of the clearing. I dismounted and walked forward. Give it up, Holt. You don't have a chance. <laughs> that blamed ornery fool. Hey, Sheriff, look behind you. What? What are you doing here, mister? Now, I want to talk to you, Sheriff. I'm coming in. Where'd you come from? San Francisco. Are you Jake Ludlow? Maybe I am. That's Manfred Holt you've got boxed up over there. What do you know about all this? A man named Alcorn wants me to see that Holt has returned to Placerville. I was on my way to his wife's cabin. So was Holt when we caught up to him. Oh. Uh, is Holt alone? Yeah, just him. He's got a saddle horse and a pack horse. Then you don't need any help. 
Not unless you want to save us some time and start digging his grave. He might surrender. You think I'd chance two days on the trail back to Placerville with Holt? He's already killed two of my deputies. He was tried and found guilty. They're going to hang him, aren't they? Hang later or shot now. What's the difference? Well, the difference between justice and hey, murder. Sir. He's coming out. I can see his horse. It's a pack horse. Stop him, Ed. Bring him down. <laughs> That's fine shooting, just fine. You missed him. It was too late. He was flying. You crazy-eyed fool. What are we going to do, Sheriff? Start closing in. I'll come in from this side. You think he's still in there? Better put that fancy gun in your hand. You might need it. Perhaps he was under the canvas on that pack horse. Who are you, mister? Name's Paladin. All right, Paladin. Keep your eyes open. Sheriff, he's gone. Ain't nobody in these trees. Looks like he got away from us again. And what did you do to stop him? Oh, I... There are his shells. He was firing from here. And he crossed over to here, where his horses were, and he, he climbed on one, the pack horse. He was under the canvas. That slippery murdering devil. Gage, you follow his trail. Me and Abel hit straight for his cabin. One way or other, we'll find him. His saddle horse is over there. You want him? No, he just slows up. Leave him be. Uh, Sheriff, I'll I'll meet you at the cabin. Look, Paladin, you cross Holt's trail. Just get out of the way. There's eleven men I know of tried to beat him on the draw. They're all wearing marble slab hats now. The sheriff and his partner Abe headed out for Holt's cabin, while the other deputy Gage followed the trail of the pack horse. When they were well on their way. I moved over towards the biggest cottonwood in the thicket. You can come down out of that tree now, Holt. There's no point in trying to shoot. You make too good a target against the sky. All right, I'm coming down. Why do you throw your gun down first? Here it is. All right, come on down. How'd you know I was still here? You rode the pack horse under the tree and swung up a branch without touching the ground. How'd you get the horse to keep running? Slip a burr under the pack saddle? Sharp rock. Hate to do it to old Jenny, but she'll keep going till she shakes that rock loose. You knew all the time, huh? What's your name? Paladin. Why don't you tell Ludlow? He would have killed you. And you? What you gonna do? I'm taking you back to Placerville. To be hung at a county fair while they hawk buttons off of my shirt as souvenirs? Let's go. Man ought to be let die like a man at the hands of a man. What are you messing in this for, anyway? The reward? Alcorn hired me to see that you don't reach him. Alcorn? Hired your gun out of that quivering tub of gully mud. Can't even fight his own fights. <laughs> Against you? Well, any man can't handle a gun. Got no business west of the Mississippi. All right, mount up. Yeah. Look, Paladin, half day's ride from here is my cabin. My wife and my boy are there. I got a present to give the boy. I see. If you let me get the cabin first, I'll go quiet with you to Placerville. No trouble. You got my word. I'm not begging, mister. I'm offering my word. The sheriff will be waiting at the cabin. I'm going to give my son his present. You've never seen your son? No. <laughs> He's only been around three weeks. Then you ought to see him before you go to Placerville. Let's go. Of all reading filters, cigarettes, can't filters best, can't filters best. It makes good sense when you smoke can't, can't. Oh, 
Oh, he ain't this the country, though. I tell you, the Sierra's got every place beat. Good country. There's a narrow trail up ahead going up over that cliff will save some time. Okay, we'll take it. Wish my stomach had quit barking at me. Hungry? Be chewing on this horse, he'd hold still long enough. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, have some of this. Yeah, jerky. I used to like jerky. Until I married up with Sarah, got used to woman cooking. Yeah, it's pretty good. This here's a trail I mentioned. All right, you lead the way. Yeah. Here. Easy. Yes, yeah, sir, a woman sure changes a man. Well, it's too bad she didn't change her ways with a gun. We might have had more time together. Man has to be the way he is. I don't like somebody, I reach for a gun just natural the way you'd reach the scratching edge. Maybe. Watch your step, this here's tricky ground. You can't go around killing everybody you don't like. Does kind of sound like I got me some bad habits. Still, it don't seem right to hold a carnival and string me up. I got a son now. Can't you just see him going around saying my daddy got hung? How a man lives is more important than how he dies. But it's my finish they'll be remembering most. Up ahead around that bend where it gets steep. Narrow and steep. You hug the wall. Okay. Now, if my boy could say, my daddy stood up like a man in a gunfight. Got shot down like a man, working a gun. Now, that's something else again. Then I would you hit pallet and take hold of that horse. Well, I'll cinch his loose and side and flip it. Uh, oh. uh. Yeah. Paladin, you hurt? No, I'm all right. I'll need help getting up. Drop me a rope. Paladin, you're down there on that ledge, and I'm up here. Come on, come on, man. Get a rope down here. You see how it is. You know what I got to do. You're taking me back to hang. Hurry up, Holt. This ledge won't hold me very long. I'm real sorry, Paladin. I thought you never killed a man except with a gun. Holt. Holt. Grab this rope, Paladin. I got it. All right, uh, mister. Come on up. I got it. Uh, 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 thanks. Uh, no thanks called for. Yeah. You didn't turn me over to Jake Ludlow when you could have, so you saved my life, man. You wouldn't have been down there if it wasn't. You went off of your trail so I could see my son. The way I see it now, we're quits. All right. Neither of us owes the other anything. Fair enough. But you keep your eyes open now on. That's my cabin there. The sheriff and Abe probably inside. Paladin... I've got to get in there. You will. What you got in mind? I'm going to wedge this. Oh, now. Oh. Wedge this pebble between the shoe and the hoof of my horse. What for? Never mind. There. Now, you stay out of sight until Ludlow and his man ride out. All right. Come on, boy. Come on. Finally got here, huh, Paladin? Oh, Sheriff, your, your man Gage caught up to Manfred Holt back near where you had him cornered this morning. He got him? No, no, he didn't. Oh, Gage did? He was still able to talk when I left him back at the clearing. Wouldn't hurt to get him to a doctor. Bad, huh? Well, uh, there's nothing I could do for him. Abe? No, no, I'm not going nowhere. Not alone. Not with Holt out there someplace. All right, get our horses. We'll go together. Okay. What's the matter with your horse, Paladin? Ah, oh, he's gone lame. I can't ride this way. You sure can't. Looks like I'm stuck here. Well, you better hide in the woods till we get back. Mm. Here we are, Sheriff. All right. <coughs> if uh, Holt gets here before we get back, use that gun. All right. <laughs>
time was when the sedan chair was considered the height of luxury. When you think of all the places you go and all the things you now do by radio, a sedan chair doesn't seem like much of a luxury at all. Tuned to a radio network like the CBS Radio Network, you can, in a matter of moments, travel to foreign capitals to learn what's happening to individuals or whole nations at a time. Because a network like CBS Radio is made up of many stations, stations like the one you're listening to now, the smartest supper clubs from New York to San Francisco invite you to dance to the music of their big-name bands night after night. Because CBS Radio's vast network facilities extend in every direction, you can laugh with the funniest comedians in Hollywood or on Broadway. Then move on to a serious discussion of space-age problems, and all in the course of an evening. By all means, use that sedan chair if you have one. But if you want to go places fast, take CBS Radio along. The little cabin sat quiet and alone in the lush green valley. There was only a dust cloud over in the west to show where Ludlow and Abe were tracking the other deputy. I turned and motioned Holt to come in. There was some whopper you told Ludlow. Look, we won't have much time before they find Gage. You better give your son his present. Uh, Paladin, I guess you and me now reached a point where we stop counting what we owe each other. Nancy? Sarah. What's this I hear about you breathing, boy? Oh, Manfred. Oh, oh no, sir. No, oh. Don't, don't be carrying oh. over so. You knew I'd be along. I knew. I brought friends, sir. Oh. Here's Mr. Paladin. Mrs. Holt. Oh. Won't you come in? No, thank you. Uh, I'll stay out here. You two have a lot of talking to catch up on. <laughs> That's true. That's surely true. Come on now, Sarah. You... You show me what you've been up to. Sorry it was so long in there, Paladin. Takes a lot of talking for a woman to tell about bearing a child. Yeah, I guess it does. It's good drinking water, ain't it? That's a good pump you got here, too. I got me a son, Paladin. Fine strapping son. Did you give him his present? I sure did. I give him my name. Manfred Holt, Jr. I, uh... I see you picked up a present for yourself. Yeah, the gun. You know, it's funny, Paladin. A fellow like me has just got to have one. Yeah. Let's get moving. The sheriff will be back any minute. I'm not going to Placerville with you. Yes, you are, Holt. Not for that crowd waiting there in Placerville. Not until I find Ned Alcorn, anyway. He hired me to see that you don't kill him. I never would feel right knowing he's walking the same earth I am. I'd see he had a gun. Now, we've talked about that, Holt. He's not very good with a gun. Too bad. If you went on, there'd be other men. Some of them pretty helpless that you wouldn't like. You'd have to kill them. A man just has to be what he is. I guess that holds for you, too. That's right. Well, I was hoping it wouldn't turn out this way, Holt. Ain't nothing you can do now to change it. You won't ride back with me? No. Let's move away from the cabin. She's been told not to come out till everyone's gone, no matter what. She won't. All right. Here. Don't try nothing fancy, Paladin. Wing and a shoulder of the lack. A man like me, you either kill or he kills you. I know. Of course, I'm figuring to beat you. I'm awful good. That pump. When the next drop of water falls... We both fire. Can you see it? Next drop. Yeah, I can see it. Right. Building up, Holt. Yeah. It's coming. <laughs> I'm sorry, Manfred. Sorry? Saving me from that... That Placerville circus? Manfred Jr., he, he don't like for his paw to get me. Manfred? Oh, Manfred. He wouldn't let me avoid it. He told me it would be like this. That you might do this for him. For him? 
He's bound to come. We've always known that. He shared his life only with many respected. So it was with his death. It was nearly dusk when I'd finished the grave and fixed a simple marker to go on it. An evening breeze was coming fresh from the high mountains. And in the half-light I could see Sarah, her son in her arms, standing by the cabin. And later, after I'd said goodbye and had ridden to the low hills that ringed the valley, I turned to look back again. Now there was no one in sight. But a trail of smoke came from the chimney, and I knew the woman was cooking the evening meal. And there was a wonderful peace in the meadowland. Welcome home, Mr. Paladin. Thank you. It's good to be back. Uh, while you were away, the San Francisco papers carried the full story of your killing Manfred Holt and your reward. Two thousand dollars. Oh, and yes, Mr. Alcorn left this envelope for you. Here you are. Oh, my fee. Yes, that's what I came back for. I'll be leaving in the morning, Mr. Davis. Leaving so soon? Something important? Very important. I have two envelopes I want to deliver to a young widow and her son in Grass Valley. Gun will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed by Norman McDonald, and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Sam Rolfe and adapted for radio by Frank Michael. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dopkin, Frank Cady, Ralph Moody, Joseph Kearns, Gene Lansworth, and Sam Edwards. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.